are there plasma beings in our atmosphere? A lot of people have been talking about plasma beings over the last few years. Uh, and yeah, maybe there's plasma beings. Maybe there's not. That's kind of what I always thought. But now there is a peer-reviewed scientific paper saying that, yeah, there's, a sh there's plasma beings running around in our atmosphere. So let's talk about it. Uh, get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I'll talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Yeah, uh, ET life in the thermosphere. Plasmas, UAP, pre-life, fourth state of matter. And here's all the authors for this. This is on researchgate.net, uh, and I will link to it, of course. Oh, and by the way, Nico sent me this, so thank you very much, Nico. This is just fascinating. Uh, abstract. Plasmas up to a kilometer in size and behaving similarly, the multicellular organisms have been filmed on 10 separate NASA space shuttle missions over 200 miles above Earth within the thermosphere. Uh, thermosphere. These self-illuminated plasmas are attracted to and may feed on electromagnetic radiation. They have different morphologies. One, A, cone, uh, yeah, one cone, two cloud, three donut, four spherical cylindrical, and have been filmed flying towards and descending from the thermosphere into thunderstorms, congregating by the hundreds and interacting with satellites generating electromagnetic activity, approaching the space shuttles. Computerized analysis of flight path tra trajectories documents these plasmas travel at different velocities from different directions and change their angle of trajectory, making 45 degree, 90 degree, and 180 degree shifts and follow each other. They've been filmed accelerating, slowing down, stopping, congregating, engaging in hunter-predatory behavior, and intersecting plasmas, leaving a plasma dust trail in their wake. Similar lifelike behaviors have been demonstrated by plasmas created experimentally. Plasmas may have been photographed in the 1940s by WW2 pilots uh, identified as Foo Fighters. Yeah, is that an explanation for the Foo Fighters? Is that an explanation for white lights that people uh, have seen in the sky, including myself? Now, the objects, for whatever I saw in the sky, were uh, intelligent, and they were interacting with my consciousness. So, I, I, you know, if that's what's going on, then something really interesting is going on in our atmosphere. Uh, plasmas may have been photographed by the yeah by, as Foo Fighters, repeatedly observed and filmed by astronauts and military pilots, and classified as UAP. Plasmas are not biological, but may represent a form of pre-life that, via the incorporation of elements common in space, could result in the synthesis of RNA. Plasmas constitute a fourth state of matter, are attracted to electromagnetic activity, and when observed in the lower atmosphere, likely account for many of the UFO UAP sightings over the centuries. The paper references this video uh, frequently and shows various uh, stills from it, talking about, yeah, plasmas, the fourth state of matter. Uh, yeah, links to this video. And it's a not great quality video, but it does show these objects, whatever they are, these beings. Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever a plasma, a living plasma is, talks about, you know, behaviors resembling hunter predators and multicellular life, uh, basic, simple life forms that you wouldn't expect intelligence or uh, consciousness from. But Indeed, if this is responsible for some of the UFO activity, including things like what I've seen and others, then they are intelligent and they are way weirder than um, simple uh, organisms that could be understood by mainstream science. I think that's kind of the danger of, you know, putting our own understandable reference points on the UFO phenomenon is people use things like words like plasmoid and things like that uh, as a way of like getting a handle on the phenomenon, which I don't know if you can. However, could there be 
plasmoids or plasma beings that are not uh, the sort of white UFO-like objects that I and others have seen uh, that are simple beings just, you know, hanging out in, in our atmosphere doing their own crazy plasmoid thing. You know, we might live in a very, very complicated ecosystem overall. I think we do. A uh, multidimensional, fascinating ecosystem. Uh, and that ecosystem might indeed encompass things like plasma beings that are just simple animals. And the idea of simple animals has come up recently with Skywatcher and so on. Uh, you know, they're bringing in sky squid, jellyfish, blobs, uh, things that don't appear to be structured craft. So could those be beings? Could those be animals? They come when called. Uh, if they were a structured craft or crews on a structured craft, uh, would they come when, you know, Jake and his team uh, use the dog whistle? You know, unclear if that would be the case. But maybe an animal would. Maybe an animal would come. Maybe a simple uh, organism uh, like, you know, a plasmoid, you know, per, you know, this information would indeed come when called. So, yeah, uh, yeah, fascinating stuff. Uh, the, the article is, is quite long, um, but it's well worth reading. Again, it references the, the video frequently. Uh, and it shows enhancements and blow-ups. Yeah, here's the donut-shaped uh, entity or category of entities that they're talking about. Uh, and uh, analysis of flight path velocity vectors. And yeah, lots, lots of breakdowns of this information. And I'll, I'll let you read it at your leisure, but it's super fascinating. And who knows, there might actually be plasmoid beings up in the sky. Elongated plasma descending into thunderstorm, possibly engaged in electron transfer in the generation of magnetic fields and electric charges and currents from shuttle mission STS-80. And this is a moving, wiggling plasma with multiple voids, nucleation uh, film by shuttle mission STS-80, 200 miles above the Earth. Plowed and conical-shaped specimens in the thermosphere approaching a violent thunderstorm raging 200 miles below. The tethered satellite is released while generating electricity and electromagnetic activity into the surrounding space medium in the thermosphere. Uh, right, the tether breaks, still generating electromagnetic activity. Hours later, after the tether broke away from the space shuttle, pulsating plasmas began approaching the tether, which is still generating electromagnetic pulses into the space medium. The tether is approximately 12 miles in length. Nearly 24 hours after the electromagnetic tethered satellite began generating electromagnetic pulse pulses, dozens, then hundreds, then thousands of pulsating extraterrestrial plasmas uh, approached and gathered close by. The tether is approximately 12 miles in length, calls them extraterrestrial plasmas. So plasmas coming from elsewhere, not necessarily plasmoid animals running around in our thermosphere. Observations and computerized analysis de demonstrates that these plasmas speed up and slow down hover in place, pulsate as they move, display dramatic shifts in velocity and trajectory, and engage in behaviors similar to simple biological organisms and typical of plasmas. However, these are not biological organisms. All their interactions can be explained by electromagnetic activity and the charges of their internal and external environment. Getting back to the uh, outer space idea, they came from outer space. As noted, the tethered satellite system was generating electromagnetic activity and ionizing the surrounded space medium. Over the next 24 hours, plasmas began appearing and engaging in complex interactions with one another and contacting the, the tether. But where did these plasmas come from? Deep space? Or were they dispersed throughout the thermosphere and only gathered when a source of electromagnetic activity was discovered? It is not unreasonable to ask if the TSS 
one R may have generated and created these plasmas. So they don't know. Jumping to the summary, the plasmas depicted in this report are electromagnetic phenomenon and are estimated to be up to a kilometer or more in length or diameter. Plasmas in the thermosphere have been observed to change shape and grow larger or smaller. Plasmas can also be less than a few centimeters in diameter. Unless created in a laboratory, or they gather in large herds in the lower atmosphere and interact or accelerate to hypervelocity, the smaller plasmas are far less likely to be observed or detected. Are plasmas alive? Just as plasma represents the fourth state of matter, which is neither gas, liquid, or solid, plasmas that form or gather in the thermosphere may also represent an alternate state of life that is not carbon-based and has no genome. Since they can take cellul cellular <laughs> since they can take cellular forms, these plasmas may also represent a form of pre-life. Their cellular structures and nucleus and plasma dust crystals providing the framework for the incorporation, synthesis, and organization of the elements and amino acids necessary to produce RNA leading to the emergence of DNA-based life. To speculate, these plasma-like entities could have originally provided the basis for life to begin. We were created by plasmas, guys. You heard it here first. Anyway, fascinating article. There could be plasma beings out there. There's apparently scientific uh, reason to think this, that they might be living or proto-living beings. Maybe they came from here. Maybe they came from out there. We don't know, but they're observing these things that are acting in predictable ways and that have been seen for a while. They may or may not be the Foo Fighters. They may or may not be responsible for some of the UFO activity that people are seeing. Either way, super fascinating. Uh, I can't wait to learn more about these crazy living plasmoids. But let me know what you guys think about it all in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook, Twitter, and Discord links below. Love to see you guys there. If you want to support Cosmic Road in a bigger way, grab a coffee mug or a t-shirt in the merch store below or become a channel member. Channel members are rock stars and I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there's plenty of other videos on the channel and I'll see you next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road signing out.